among civilization's great accomplishments, art, architecture, and engineering, the pursuit of cleanliness lagged far behind. Even in the 18th century, wigs were worn so that one could get rid of head lice and avoid the horrors of bathing. Around 1840, the first bathtubs were imported to North America. And after experimenting with soap and water, people gradually got the hang of them. Actually, when it comes to washing away grime, water by itself is a poor cleansing agent. In plain water, ring around the collar, a fact. There's plain stuff. It just won't dissolve. Why is that? Let's start by looking at what we mean by dissolve. One compound can be dissolved in another if the molecules of the two compounds can be mixed randomly and evenly. The compound water is a small polar molecule. Polar because the electronegative oxygen has a stronger affinity for electrons than the two hydrogens. The result is that the slightly negative oxygen of one water molecule is attracted to the slightly positive hydrogen of another, forming a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonding builds up a network of electrostatic attractions. However, when nonpolar molecules, such as the hydrocarbon chains found in fats and oils, encounter water they cannot worm their way into the hallowed space between the water molecules. Which is a long coming about to saying, water and oil don't mix. Now let's take a closer look at the grime on that collar. An oil or fat is composed of three long chain carboxylic acids called fatty acids. Tied to glycerin by means of ester linkages. In most fat molecules, the long hydrocarbon chains have no double bonds and are said to be saturated with hydrogen. Oil molecules have varying numbers of double bonds and with fewer hydrogens, they're said to be unsaturated. Both fat and oil molecules are non polar and as such cannot participate in hydrogen bonding with water. If, however, we could somehow place an ionic charge on the end of the molecule, it could cut a swath through the hydrogen bonds in water. The solution, ironically, calls for fighting fat with fat, an idea as old as the ancient Egyptians, who mixed animal fat with potash to make soap. We'll now examine this ancient recipe from the perspective of modern chemistry. Start with the prime ingredient, an oil or fat molecule, and introduce a fat buster, a base. If sodium hydroxide is dissolved in water, the sodium cation and the hydroxyl anion will dissociate. Three negatively charged hydroxide ions are now free to cleave the fat molecule by breaking the ester linkages. Once broken, the sodium cation is attracted to the negative charge, forming a soap molecule. Two more reactions, and two more soap molecules. Now, the soap molecule has an ionic head and a non-polar tail. While the hydrocarbon tail remains oil-soluble, the ionized head is water-soluble. This is a grease slick attached to a collar immersed in water. Release the soap molecules, and they align themselves so that the non-polar ends tail in to form a sphere called a micelle. Through the agitation of washing, the micelle envelops the oil block. With the molecules realigning themselves 
so that the non-polar ends penetrate the grease. The envelopment continues, and a much larger micelle is formed. Since the surfaces of the micelles are negatively charged, they are attracted to the polar water molecules. And the micelles repel each other as well, because they contain similarly charged peripheries. Note then that oil isn't really dissolved in water. Rather, it is converted into discrete, suspended globs, transported by water and swept away. Except that now, instead of ring around the collar, we have ring around the sink. The ring is caused by the carboxylate ions in the soap molecules, reacting with hard water cations, such as magnesium, to form an insoluble salt. The formation of this undesirable precipitate can be counteracted by a chelating agent, an agent which can tie up the troublesome magnesium ions. However, it's too expensive to add enough chelating agents to completely counteract the hard water cations. So chemists devised a better solution, the detergent. Let's return momentarily to the soap molecule. With a backbone containing from 10 to 18 carbons and a charged head. The synthetic detergent is an analog of the soap molecule. Chemists may begin with a long, unbranched hydrocarbon, but substitute different charged groups. One type of group is sodium lauryl sulfate. And the class of detergents employing sodium sulfate is called the primary alkyl sulfates. The primary alkyl sulfates with tails containing 12, 14, and 16 carbons constitute the backbone of the shampoo industry. About 50% of a bottle of shampoo contains the actual detergent component. Next, the manufacturer adds at least 30% water, which means you're paying a third for good old H2O, a little castor oil, Endless room. And voila, a product that works up a lather in hard water. While it may be a little pricey, it sure beats boiling your hair. Today, detergent companies, using the principle of the oil soluble tail and the water soluble head, are constantly designing new cleansing agents to remove the grubbiest of stains, to wash the tenderest of skins, to strip off layers of wax, so that cleanliness now ranks as one of the noblest achievements of civilization.